How many of us are really living the life that we choose to live? Financial freedom seems to mean such a different thing to each person you talk to. 48% of people think it's about paying off your mortgage. 43% of people believe it's about paying off debts. But what does it mean in the property world? Well, most of us talk about the passive income route. And this is often created through boring, vanilla, buy-to-let properties. But it's not just the passive income from rentals. It's also through the capital growth and appreciation of the properties through time. Ultimately, financial freedom to me means the ability to live a life that you want through an asset. And I don't know if you've ever read The Richest Man in Babylon, but great book, story boarded all the way through. It's really good. And essentially, it talks about the gold and silver paradox. So people earn their gold and then they spend it. So you, you end up meeting people that earn really good amounts of money, like 60, 70K a year. And you think, bloody hell, you must have so much money. And actually, they are broke on a monthly basis because they live to their means, or often, in the UK at least, we live above our means. So the context of this is that you earn your gold, you invest your gold, and then your gold produces silver, and then you spend your silver, right? And it's a really nice concept. So in property, with boring vanilla buy-to-let properties, if I earn money from my businesses, and I then invest all of that money into properties, it then pays me a passive income on a monthly basis, that eventually I'll be able to live off. And that rental income is your silver. Now, does this happen overnight? No, but it can happen. And often, it's then about living your dream life. The reality is, if you've ever uh, looked at cash flow quadrant, rich dad, poor dad, is a doctor versus a mechanic versus a postman, all of those individuals can become financially free because it's not about how much money you earn, it's about how much money you need on a monthly basis and can your assets cover your liabilities. So why did I use property? You know, really, it could be stocks and shares. It could be cryptocurrency. Please don't do cryptocurrency unless you're an expert. It is not an investment for most people. It's really about the asset for me. For me, I'm pretty obsessed about the tangibility. What does that mean? I can see it, smell it, and touch it. And it's easy to understand. Most of us invest in stocks and shares. That Let's say Facebook. How does Facebook make money? You might go, um, by driving ads? Mm, yeah, that's a small part of it. Who's the CFO of Facebook? Don't know. Who's the CEO of Facebook? Don't know. All you can think of, really, is Zuckerberg. And most of you cannot think of a single individual in Facebook unless you know them personally. So why is it we would invest in a company that we don't even know who the leaders are and we don't even know how it makes money? That seems absolutely ridiculous. Like, yeah, but the company's doing well, therefore it should make more money, right? Well, no, not really. And then you've got property where you know how it makes money. You buy an asset, somebody else moves into it and makes it their home and they pay you rent on a monthly basis. But then on top of that, basic economics of supply and demand. I don't know about you, but I don't think there's ever going to be a point where we don't want a roof over our heads. But the thing is, there's more people in the UK that want houses than there are houses available, i.e. the demand is up here, the supply is down here, therefore prices go up. And so we benefit from inflation and capital appreciation. So for me, I love the stability, I love the simplicity, and I love the tax-free nature of benefiting through capital growth. Financial freedom for me has been quite a, an emotional journey, I would say. So I bought my first property when I was 19. It was number 36 Burdett Street in Burnley for £21,800. Don't be too impressed, it's probably still worth £21,800. And it was a real grind. Now, in property, it's this very unique space where people get sold onto a course about passive income, which is crazy, really. Like, really, if you're going to get educated, it should be to build a property business, not just invest in the passive income side. And this is all about producing your gold. Because if you're watching this and you don't have an earning stream, you don't have a pot of money to invest in property, then you need something to build that. And for me, 
When I started my journey, I was thinking about financial freedom and passive income. I had fuck all money. So it's not exactly like, yeah, I can live this passive income dream. And when I say I have no money, I mean zero, credit card debt, everything. So I end up investing my education to actually build up a business. And that's what Aspire Property Group is now. We now make millions every single year from that. And believe it or not, I, apart from 25 grand a year as a base salary, I don't touch a penny, like any money whatsoever from any of my businesses. It's all reinvested into boring vanilla buy to let properties. The reason I love this concept, by the way, and it doesn't happen overnight, you reinvest, you build it up, it starts with a buy to let that's bringing in 150 quid a month. And then a few years later, it's now bringing in 350 net, that's net income a month, because of rental increases and things like that. But then you use it and you buy another one and buy another one because the value then goes up every two to five years. I'll then refinance it, pull out the money and buy again and buy again and buy again and buy again. And that's how I've amassed the portfolio over time. Now, for me, yeah, at the start, it was about the cool things. I managed to get the Aston Martin DBS and I bought that in cash. And that was a, don't quote me, 167 grand, I think. Call it 170 just to make sure I'm covered. So that was 170 grand. And that's such a stupid thing to buy, a depreciating asset. And I bought it in cash. Not literally a holder of cash, by the way, but a bank transfer. Didn't get any finance on it, just bought it outright. And I remember a few weeks later going, oh my fucking God, I cannot believe that I spent that money. And I realized that give or take, the exact amount of time that I was worrying about it was almost to the penny how long it took me to replace that income. And the passive income now is, is close to half a million a month. So that's just coming in on a repeated basis, right? And it scales up and scales up. And yes, when you get to that level, obviously the scaling is expedited, goes faster and faster. And that was cool. You know, the holidays, the villas, the cars and stuff like that. And then I realized, yeah, now that I can do that, not that bothered by it, if I'm completely honest. It's more about experiences and the networking and things you could do with your family. So uh, a great example is this week, well, yesterday actually, I was at the Braymont factory, which I knew nothing about this watch brand. And then at the end of it, bought a watch from them because I'm a sucker, right? But what's really nice is having the time freedom to be able to go do that whilst passive income still coming in. So every single day money comes in my account without doing the work now. And that's really cool to be able to do experience there. Now I get to network with great individuals. And then it goes a bit more than that. So for me, and the reason why I'm sharing this is you might think financial freedom's for you. It's not for you. It's often, I don't have any kids, but when I've got kids, it's about the time that I'm gonna be able to spend with them. My mom, who dedicated her life, unfortunately, my dad passed away when I was 13, and then my mom, sort of just absolute hero, I'm not gonna go into it because I'll end up getting emotional. Um, but then I ended up being able to retire her um, a few years back now. I then ended up buying a house for her, buying a camper van for her so she'd go about. And seeing the freedom that she's got, and I think at a certain point, it's that, that safety blanket that we can end up creating. And I know that me talking about the cars and retiring my mum and things like that is a future pace for most of us and most of, most of you watching. But actually, why not think big? Just because you're at the beginning of your journey doesn't mean you shouldn't think about 10 years from now. The truth is, no matter what you want to facilitate, the main thing is two things. You make money whilst you're asleep or you'll be making, needing to make money until you die. And number two is the passive income stream is just replaceable on a monthly basis. So I'm not a massive spender. I know I buy watches and stuff like that, but in the grand scheme of things, I'm not a massive spender. And so the cool thing is, even if I spent the half a million by the end of this month, by the first week of next month, the half a million is back in the bank account. And even if you bring that down to a smaller scale, let's say you get one boring vanilla buy to let property that brings you 200 pounds. Don't just dismiss that 200 pounds. It's 200 pounds that you could spend. And then the next month is there again and again and again and again. And it's about you stopping to work so hard for your money. And it's about getting that money working hard for you. The reality is property is a near indestructible wealth builder. And it's really powerful that 
that it doesn't really go completely in line with the economy. So every other investment is directly re related to the economy. So for example, businesses, when they shrink, there's recessions, when they grow, there's booms. But property is kind of isolated or insulated from that. So take, if there's a 10% drop in the overall GDP, the gross domestic product, which is the income of the country, if you like, that doesn't mean that properties go down. Think about it this way. If the demand is here and people are willing to buy here, but there's this many properties, but now the demand goes down to here, will it impact the prices? Sure but there's still so much more demand than there is supply. If you want to know the figure, there is currently over a 1 million unit housing shortage. 1 million! That means there's 1 million people looking for a house right now to either buy or rent that doesn't currently exist. And we are not keeping up in any way, shape or form with the development, which is crazy in my opinion. So we are massively behind and it is shit if you don't own a property, but amazing if you do because you can near guarantee that long-term investment so how much money do you actually make and it may shock you now let's say you have got a hundred and fifty thousand pounds what what if I told you that I could turn that into 450,000 over a 10 year basis, trebling your investment. And what if I told you that 450,000 becomes 1.35 million in 20 years? From today, you might think 10 years, 20 years, that's long term. Yeah, guess what? It takes fucking time to build wealth. But I'm not talking about even adding to the pot because if you've got 150 grand today, you'd like to think you're going to be adding and adding and adding with your savings, right? But that 150 grand becomes 1.35 million in just 20 years. Or 100 grand becomes almost a million pounds without investing anything. That is not a million pound portfolio. That is a million pound to your net wealth over a 20 year period. How the fuck does that happen? Well, it's because of capital appreciation. Now, very simple. I know there's fees and stamp duty, but just to keep this easy as an example, if you buy a £100,000 buy-to-let property, you don't put £100,000 into it. You employ leverage or a mortgage, typically at 75% loan-to-value. What does that mean, Jamie? What it means is you only need to put in the £25,000 deposit not the £100,000. Now, there's other fees and things like that, but just as an example. So, let's say there's a 5% capital growth this year on that property. Now, bear in mind, the average in the UK is 7.9%, or if you want to write this down, on average, in a selected area, you have to get the right areas, it will typically double every 10 years. So 100 grand becomes a 200 grand property, then doubles again and becomes a 400,000 pound property in 20 years. Now, here's the power. There's two things, compounding, compounding and leverage. Let me cover compounding because I've kind of done that already. If you increase 5% this year, and then it increases 5% next year, you'd go, that's a 10% growth, right? No, because that's not how value increases or compounding works. Because a 100 grand house becomes a 105 grand house. And then there's a 5% increase on that 105,000 pounds. So now it's not a 5,000 pound increase on the 100 grand. It's also the 5% of that five grand, which is another 250 pounds. So now it's £110,250. You might think, it's 250 quid. who gives a shit, Jamie? Because the power of compounding is your friend over the long term. So it will become hundreds of thousands of pounds of compounding over a 20 to 30 to 40 year basis. And by the way, if you're anything like me, where your exit is death, i.e. giving it to my kids, and then hopefully putting it in trust for their kids and their kids and their kids, you are building a centimillion pounds portfolio over the generations. And that's not bullshit, by the way. If you've got 100 grand today, over 100 years, well, let's think, 100 grand becomes 200 in 10 years. 400, 800, 1.6 million, 3.2 million, 6.4 million, 12.8 million, 25.6 million, 51.2 million, and a hundred and bollocks, 
2.8 million. What? That is 100 million in, t in 100 years. Now, I know you won't b uh, benefit from that. Stop being a selfish bastard. Think about your great, great, great grandkids that you can help in that future. And the thing is, the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago, right? Yeah. But the second best time is today, and that's the action that we need to take. The other thing is leverage. If you've got that 100 grand, you have to bear in mind, you go, oh, 5% return from the capital growth. No, because you're only putting in 25%. Added fees, I know. So if there's a 5% increase on the value of the property, it's what? 5,000 pounds. But that 5,000 pounds increase compared to the investment is what? 20% return. 5,000 divided by your 25,000 pounds investment. 20%. Where can you get a 20% return? It's fucking crazy. And this is the power of property, put simply, of course, that if you have 50 grand or more and you're looking to invest in property, you can become a millionaire in your lifetime, dependent on your age. How insane is that? And this is the true thing about passive income. It helps. It helps you quit your job. It helps you get your income right. It helps f uh, help you on the monthly basis. But what's going to create true financial freedom and create a millionaire legacy for your kids and their kids is the capital appreciation compounding and leverage through time. Now, the secret of wealth in property is selecting the right areas and getting the right properties. Lo and behold, getting a great property in a shit location is not going to help you. And by the way, that's what my company does, Aspire Property Group. So if you've got the funds to invest, which is a minimum of 50,000, and you want to know the single best areas in the UK to invest right now, and you want me and my team to help you build that portfolio to create a million pound legacy, put APG in the comments right now. I'll put it in the comments and pin it to the top. Fill in your details. And right now we are offering a completely free, no obligation, one-to-one -one strategy session to help you with the right areas, the right mechanisms, and all you need is £50,000 per property to invest right now and start that portfolio. The reality is that financial freedom takes time. And the truth is, so many of us are trying to get rich quick, and that's a problem. Getting rich is easy. Or should I say simple? Getting rich is simple. It's when you want to get rich quick that you're going to end up losing your money and making somebody else rich. So do yourself a favor. Whatever you're doing today, don't just watch this video and do nothing. Do something to take action that's going to change your financial future. You can't control that you didn't plant the tree 10 years ago, but you can make a decision right now that makes 2024 your best year yet. And if you want to be one of those that makes it happen, put APG in the comments right now and help me to help you. If you did get value from this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you're not subscribed yet, you want to learn more about property investing in 2024 and beyond, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.